Nano's son, uh, JR, who's also a promoter and is following in his father's footsteps, wanted to have dinner. And I said, okay, well, tonight, why don't we do it at Whiskey Barrel? And he, he sent me a, a text saying that uh, you all were there last week. And I was like, really? Why didn't they tell me, you know? And then you all came in, and it was like you were next door. Next door, yeah. You, you, and, and you were pretty surprised with the place here, man. Man, you know, I'm really surprised. You know, it's, not, it's great. You know, I saw one of your videos where you had uh, Chris Perez, Carlos Guzman, uh -huh. my friend, buddy Carlos. Yeah. And a few other, uh, I think, Raymond Horta. But, uh, yeah. you know, I could see it in the background. I knew it was kind of an exciting place. But, man, I am really, really impressed this place man yeah it's gonna be a hangout yeah man and uh, and we've got hangout. mark morales uh doing uh some uh, acoustic you've been promoting for a long time man and you know how has the promotion business evolved like compared to you know the 90s and then of and course actually, the millennium the 70s man yeah i mean obviously the ticket sales or the ticket prices I mean, it's not what they used to be. When I used to go see, you know, the metal bands at the Via Real in the early 80s, it was $16, $14, $7. Of course, nowadays, the tickets prices are through the roof, bro, right? Uh, you know, there's a lot of factors that eventually uh, started getting a little higher because you remember back in the day when I was at the Civic Center, even the Via Real, the bands used to come just by themselves and their instruments, what you call the backline. There was no light show. There was no big PA. The PAs were just a simple couple of uh, amplifier boxes. Lights at the VRL. I had five those uh, 199 fluorescent uh, lights. Yeah. That, was, that was it. And it was, uh, and I credit El Grupo Mas, the innovators that started carrying sound and lights. Yeah. Even though the uh, old Tejano band, like Sunny and the Songliners, I mean, they have a tree. tree post with about eight lights on the sides but then Mars man they they revolutionized the, the, the lights and the sound and from there you know I, uh, I also go back to where I got my first ride on the contract the contract was just the artist they performed and they uh, they bring in their own instruments drums guitar Samson that's it there was Joe Stampley and a writer said he was requiring two chairs on the stage Two chairs. What does he want? Two chairs. I thought it was probably for the for the steel player and maybe for the piano player. Turns out that he used those to put his his amp, uh, the PA the head Gray brought in. There was a box that opened up in two. There were the speakers. He put the speakers on top of the wow. chairs. Wow! <laughs> so it's gone to where it, where it is now. The productions and shows will cost. Depending on the caliber of uh, concert that you have, yeah, like the uh, Jennifer Lopez just played, man, that was like a, a hundred and twenty-five thousand dollar cost of production. Uh huh. Then we go to the regular standard, uh, like uh, Randy Rogers, La Mafia, Mas, events that I'm doing at the Far Event Center. We're talking about uh, about five thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So that it adds up to the uh, ticket price. Yeah. And then uh, the occupancy are now bigger. The value's bigger. All the venues are bigger and they attract more people. So the artists automatically have a bigger price tag. Yeah. And then the advertisement, when I started doing the advertisement, uh, the radio spots at KRT was 75 yeah. cents, KGBD uh -huh. 125. Now the minimum spot you can get for 30 seconds, $50 a spot. Yeah. So the cost to advertise the radio, you know, TV, becomes kind of expensive. You put all those tracks, now they're asking for catering. And the way the catering started is that the artists never asked for anything, hospitality, dressing rooms. But when the industry started growing, the competition of the agencies, one agent would try to steal away an artist from another agency. Look, if you come with me, I'll guarantee you on the contract that I'll get you beer and a dinner. Yeah. And then uh, eventually it started growing. Well, I'll get you beer, dinner, hotel rooms, and I'll get you breakfast, lunch, Women. and I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so you know, you start putting all that together. That's why it's now instead of paying a six-dollar ACDC yeah. uh, Metallica ticket, now you have to pay a hundred dollars. Yeah. $600. And then you you go online, and there's extra fees as well that are added to the ticket. 
where you, when you go buy them at, a, at, at the box office, you don't have to deal with all those fees, right? You know, that's also another history story that back in the day, it's what you call a hard ticket. Ticket, we would put pre, pre-printed tickets, ticket outlets in the valley, all cash, no checks, no credit cards, and then go out at the box office and do the same thing. Then my son, JR, he was a pioneer in South Texas to come out before Ticketmaster came down to the area to start out with the uh, ticket printing like Ticketmaster. He was the first one that started it. And of course, for his, uh, nobody was used to paying a, a, a fee to buy tickets online or yeah. the ticket outlet. But how was he going to pay for his equipment? I didn't have to go spend the gas and people to go deliver tickets, pick up tickets. So it became convenient for the promoter and the venue to have a ticket company. Then when the State Farm Arena opened up as Dodge Arena, JR was actually the ticket service uh-huh. for State Farm Arena, the first arena in South Texas. Yeah. Of course, after about the first three or four years, Ticketmaster came in the market and, uh, yeah. and, and took over.